figure out which one's which. So uh, good morning and welcome. Uh, lovely to see you all. Uh, today we were expecting Nick Hems. Unfortunately, he's unable to be here at short notice. And hence, this morning you have us, which I hope that you're all cheering for. Uh, I can't hear you cheering, so I'm just going to take it. Uh, I think we can assume. I, I think yeah, it's going to take it as red, yeah. yes. Yes. So we, we thought, as uh, I suppose at this moment, as we're beginning to think about quarter four of 2020, the, the year that just keeps on giving and giving, and it just... um, that we'd have a bit of an explore around, I suppose, what we found to be the, um, the defining difference between the the survival businesses and the success businesses, and indeed between the success businesses and the significant businesses as they move forward. And over the last few months, uh, we've had sessions on direction, on sales, on purpose, and the core to it all uh, really comes into planning and businesses' ability to plan and get that planning in place. Uh, so this morning, I've asked Andy from the Progress Shed, who I think many of you will know, uh, to, to actually join me. And we're, we're hoping to share some of our wisdom. Uh, well, well, thoughts anyway. Yeah, thoughts. Uh, <laughs> Let's go with thoughts. That I hope will get you thinking and planning and talking and pushing to move forward over the next few months. And... The start point, uh, the start point, uh, as anyone has mentioning and talking about the idea of 10, 5, 3, 1, 97, 1, relating through to timeframes. And when we come through to planning, it tends to be that uh, on the coaching side, we'll begin to get people to endeavor to look at that future position. So uh, we'll tend to start with the longer term vision. Uh, the the ten year point, and in, in relation to this, this is to my mind, it's kind of the start point because it all starts with well, what you want, and we, we've got a bit of formula that we run into this, uh, which is uh, dreams times goals plus plans and learning plus the action equals results. Um, It all starts with dreams, Pete, right? It all starts with dreams uh, or objectives. Uh, if you want to be more business orientated, it's the objectives. But there's still the dreams for the business, what you want the business to achieve. Mm. It's where you want it to get to. Um, creating goals uh, and creating goals from your dreams. Well, firstly, how do you create your bigger dreams or objectives? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting because uh, this is something I think a lot of people do struggle with. It's a, a dream is essentially, I mean, when we were younger, when we're, when we're, we're children, um, uh, and for everyone it's a different age, but when we're children, oh, we don't have any problems with dreaming. We don't have any problems with imagination. We don't have problems with imagining that we can be an astronaut or fireman or, uh, um, or whatever else it is we want to be. If we, we, you know, we want to be a scientist or it, it doesn't matter. We, we, we have no problem imagining that future for ourselves. And as we get older, we start to... Um, uh, we get told actually to be realistic. We get told that um, not everybody achieves. We, we, we live in a society of people who, um, uh, in a world where people, um, and they're not trying to be mean, they're trying to protect you, they're trying to protect your emotions, where they're telling you to manage your expectations. And as we get older and older and older, we start to suppress those dreams. And then we start to ignore them. And then of course we, we, we get into business and we end up planning. And we start inevitably from where we are and try and look forward to say, well, where can we go rather than actually, where do I want to be in the future? And what would that look like? And, and that's what a dream is. A dream is just your imagination telling you what you want your future to be like. And that's, that's kind of where we start, right? And, and, it, and it is the starting point. And uh, I, I think the reality is once you've actually got a dream, an objective, uh, whatever it might be, and whether that's the business focus or personal focus, once you've got that objective, actually it becomes much easier, uh, much more straightforward to create some clear, simple goals. Uh, one of the things that I've tended to find uh, over the years working uh, in this role is that people either have no goals 
just dreams, or they have loads and loads of goals. And they just have bucket loads. So there's been lots of research into goals and how many you can function with, how many your brain can cope with. And it, it, it tends to come back. Uh, there, there is a whole book on the, on the, the focus on the one thing. Uh, it still divides out into other things. There's strategic plans that focus around the core objective and the four core uh, business objectives and goals that lead there. And I, I think for me, it, it, it comes into this concept of the power of three. Um, Andy, do you want to explain? Yeah, yeah. The, so the, the human brain, um, the human brain can cope with about seven different things at once. Four of them tend to be subconscious, three of them tend to be conscious. Um, we won't spend the next hour going into the psychology of why that's true. Just trust us, it is true. Um, actually, the, the, the power of three, um, you, you will notice it in, in, in many things. Um, you see it in speeches by politicians a lot, no more taxes. Um, you see it in TV programs, location, location, location. Um, you will see it in, um, uh, I, I, I can't remember the Latin, but it's, I came, I saw, I conquered, Benny Vici. Anybody who's good at Latin, please type it in. Um, it, it has been, it's been around since, um, uh, since, since ancient Greece, where um, uh, they know that this is what the human brain can remember. So, I mean, if you, if you find um, most CEOs of most big companies will be asking their people to come up with free things or what free things are you focusing on this week? What free things should you be doing? So uh, it, it's not that you shouldn't have, uh, I mean, generally we have one dream of the future because the dream can encompass multiple 20, 30, 40 different things. But the goals are, okay, so what, what do I need to achieve in order to get there? So in order to get to my next level of success, and we've all heard the, um, the old adage that success is a journey. Well, if it's a journey, it needs a destination. The dream is the destination that you're going to. Okay, so the goals can be milestones. Where do I need to get to in order to be there? We try and remember more than three. Um, we tend to lose focus. The, I remember having a conversation many, many years ago where we were talking about focus products in a, in a, in a, in a big business. So this is a, you know, a, a billion pound business that I was working in. And we were talking about, they had 13 focus products. And my point was, well, focus means precise and to the point. How can I be precise and to the point 13 different things at the same time? I, it just can't be done. And we managed to nail that down to, to free. And we saw a half billion pound increase over the next five years by focusing on just the three most important things. So, I, I mean, that's essentially the power of free. So we're not saying you shouldn't have more than three goals. We're saying you can probably only focus on three goals at a time. So when it comes into the dream orientated, the longer term objectives, uh, something which I, I, I tend to like to bring into this is Bruce Lee's I love quote. His <laughs> which is, uh, I, I'm going to read it so I get it word perfect, but <laughs> a goal is not always meant to be reached. It often serves as simply something to aim at. Because actually the longer term goals, it's really quite difficult to be exactly clear on where you want to be and what you want to have and what your business is going to look like in 10 years' time. And therefore, actually... Your goal just helps to determine what needs to be done in order to move forward. Um, why, why is this so important? Uh, well, it's, it's the power of writing down your goals. So, I mean, it's not just, it's about having something to focus on. So the human brain and uh, any of you that know us, you'll have heard us talk about RAS and you'll have heard us talk about um, how, how, why we are goal orientated creatures. It's 300,000 years of evolution that, that, that our brain is actually biologically engineered to be goal orientated. It just is. Much less than that length of time for, for you. For, for me, yeah. Yeah, okay. You know, I'll, I'll buy into that. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, our brains are evolutionarily designed to be, um, to, to, to focus on goals, to move towards goals. It, it, it's how we have become the species that we are. Um, if we take that a step further forward, if we don't write something down, it's not true. In our brains, as we write something down, we commit to it. In our brain, it fires 10,000 more neurons than just typing it. So we always should write things down. And there's, there's an old study, and it's been um, 
bandied around. And I think it was actually, the, the study was released before the study actually happened, but since the study has happened. Where, so uh, if, if you want the history of this, it was the 1950 Yale study mm. that um, the- Yes, that one. The, there was the, then um, discovered by Harvard not to have taken place and just to have been a paper that someone had created. So Harvard apparently um, re, redid the whole exercise, which related through to establishing the number of students from a, 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 from a finals year who had written goals, the number who had um, verbal, goals. verbal goals, and the number who had just ideas in their heads. And then 10 years later, coming back to them to establish what success they'd achieved. And unsurprisingly, those with written goals had achieved, uh, I think it was uh, more, more than 90% of the yeah. wealth of the group. They, they had 97% uh, of the combined wealth of the entire group. However, this was therefore then referred to in hundreds of business texts, most famously uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins. Mm, yeah. And Good book. Uh, then was copied out fr from there into many, many other texts. It was a few years later that they discovered, in fact, the Harvard study had never taken place either. And then it was actually Columbia University which redid the whole exercise. Yeah. In, it has in, actually been done. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 into the uh, 80s and 90s, uh, so, which I, I found quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, but there, there was a truth in it. But the power of written goals is about actually the understanding that billions of great ideas never go anywhere. It's about having a written roadmap, something to follow, um, and when it's not in your head, uh, then isn't it amazing how in your head that uh, August can become January and 2020 can become 2024, although right now that might be quite a nice mm. realisation in the real world. Um, so the written goals give you a reason to progress and you might have to learn more to get there. So with the, the formula we gave you, so dreams uh, times your goals plus your plans times your learning. So you might have to learn more stuff to get there. Um, and right now, most businesses, most business people, um, I'm fairly certain everyone is out there learning an awful lot right now because we're having to learn how to accommodate the changes, the changing, the changing patterns of buying, the changes of our team structures, of our team working, remote working, uh, beginning to understand that actually a, a remote team and there are lots of benefits for the business, but actually I think businesses are only just beginning to find some of the negative sides of that as they're discovering the social separation of teams, reduces loyalty, it almost creates a commoditized workforce in many cases. And I think the banks are beginning to go, hmm. Perhaps it's not a perfect thing. Perhaps there was a reason for having offices. So there's a huge number of changes coming through. So we're all having to adapt, having to change. As a result of that, most of our thinking and our planning is becoming short term. Uh, how, do we, how do we open uh, the office next week? How do we... Um, how do we let customers into the shop next week? How do we uh, go back for face-to-face -face meetings? Um, all of these short-term elements are both urgent and important. Uh, and the things that we have to focus on, we have to be quite reactive. And uh, so uh, next week, I think it's next week, we've got our, um, I hope it's next week, I'm done looking forward yeah, yeah, um, We've, we've got our nice day planning and, <laughs> We um, come four weeks ago, we, we were told, yes, it can all go ahead very comfortably. So we we're very delighted to get it uh, offline and into a real environment. Then suddenly there's the rule of six and we had to go through the whole thing and we we're adapting. We've still got changes, but the event can go ahead. And I think everyone's excited to be joining us, which is great. Uh, so um, that's going to be fantastic. Uh, but by becoming reactive, our thinking, our planning tends to get forgotten. We tend to come back to thinking about, well, next week, not next month. It's a really interesting point, Pete, because um, I, uh, just as you were talking, I was reminded of um, <laughs> a, a fair while ago. 
uh, in, in my last kind of corporate role, and I, I was sat in a in the board meeting, um, and we were talking about. And one of the things that every month we the question we would ask is: Are our short term priorities? impacting our longer term goals and vision. So every single month we would sit down and go, okay, so is, is what we're doing right now getting us closer towards our long term goal or actually is it negatively impacting that because of the business needs? And if it is, how do we need to change our strategic plan in order to do it? So a strategic plan is how we achieve our long term goals and an operational plan, an operational or tactical plan or whatever you want to call it, is what needs to be done this year, what needs to be done this quarter, and we'll come to that in a bit i just think it's a it's a really important point to remember is that during times of crisis pandemics i mean none of us have ever been through this before but recessions we've been through before and it, it, in these uncertain times planning becomes even more important it doesn't become less important because we become reactive and reactivity is what everybody else does and if you act like everybody else you end up with what everybody else has got and that's generally a drop in revenue during the recession. So it, that's important. The, the other thing that came to mind just as you were talking is Marshall Goldsmith's book on, um, on, on getting forward, which is what got you here won't get you there. Uh, I kind of changed that statement into if you already, and this was on the learning point. So if you already knew what you needed to know and your team already knew what they needed to know and you had the expertise in place and you were already taking the right actions that you needed to take in order to get to where you wanted to be, arguably you would probably already be there so the, the learning comes from okay so what skills are we missing what actions are we not taking or what actions are we taking that we shouldn't be taking and that just comes back to review so yeah, yeah. i thought that was a really interesting point uh, and coming back into this element of reactive as, as far as a business is concerned it's probably really important to start thinking about the dangers of that um because actually the dangers are very clear especially in these times of turmoil and I, I, I think there's a truth that only once you've identified the objective, the dream, that only then can you create the goal that actually leads you to understand how to plan to get there and what you need to learn and develop to do that. Doing is, so what, you what actions you actually have to take in order to get to where you want to get there. And the reality is, in many cases, you won't get all the way there. But if you're a long way along that route, you'll probably be better off and more comfortable than you would have been otherwise. The bit that tends to drop out, especially when we're busy, especially when we're in the reactive zone of now, uh, in chaos or just plain disrupted, the bit that tends to drop out is the planning. Um, so start with that 10 year point. And after 10 comes five. Um, uh, f the five-year point, it, it becomes a bit more tangible, but it's still quite a long way out as far as most of us think. Um, a great tool that we uh, work with on uh, our uh, on our 18-month planning days uh, is a vision orbit. And if nobody's actually done one of those days, I think we'll be running a couple of them as we come into the back part of this year. Um, but a vision orbit is a great tool. It's about actually saying, well, where do we want that business to be in five years? And it's a want, so it's a dream. Um, it's probably based on that bigger dream, but where do we want to be in five years? And then where's that, or how's that compared with now? And from that, it's then actually a case of just working out what those yearly steps are as you move forward. And if you can work out those yearly steps as you move forward, actually, you then be saying, okay, so we want to be there, but actually the yearly step, the three-year step, well, the three-year step is just a bit more detail. It, it then becomes a stepping stone on the re out. Uh, and by the way, it doesn't have to be 10, five, three. It can be milestones in your life. It can be the bigger points. It can be the steps forward, uh, or it can just be time blocks. It can be your 50th birthday, um, sorry, 60th. Um, it can be when the business is five years old, it can be when your child's wherever, it can be just that straightforward time block, it can be whatever you want it to be. So don't feel constrained by saying, well, 10 years time. It might be saying, well, actually, where do I want to be when I'm 60? Um, whatever it might be. The, the, the important is having, the important bit is having something to aim at. The important bit is actually 
then creating the plans mm. that step you forward and create the progress. So the 10 takes it down to the five. The five uh, is a great milestone to reach. If you can reach that milestone of being fairly clear on the five year step, and um, then that's great. Pull that back to the three and it becomes more defined. From that, you can actually come back to the one year plan. Now, and this is where it becomes an operational plan rather than a strategic plan, because now it's something you can actually put into place in your business operationally. This is something that needs to be delivered. It comes with actions. It comes with um, specific things that will need to happen rather than things that, are, you know, uh, uh, pictures or, uh, of what needs what you, what you want to have happened. This, this becomes, well, what needs to happen in order to achieve that longer term goal. And, and, and actually, this is where most business, when it comes to strategic and operational planning, uh, have some issues is because a lot of businesses, especially smaller businesses, will start with a one year operational plan if they plan anything at all. Um, and the issue with that is you're creating a plan based on the back of nothing. Whereas big businesses, uh, during the 1980s, Japanese companies were planning 40 years into the future. And we all know what happened to Japanese car companies from the 1980s to today. And many of them actually have 100 year plans. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're not for one minute suggesting you should be doing a 40 year plan. But what we're saying is based off the back of where do you want to be when you're 60, 50, when, where do you want to be in five years time, 10 years time, allows you to create a workable, deliverable, operational plan in for the next 12 to 18 months. So. And, I, and I think that's the, the crux of it. The, the one year plan is where things really begin to get real. 12 months, it's four quarters. In business terms, it's not very long at all. And in terms of this, how specific can you be? Um, we're not looking to achieve dreams here we're looking to create actions we're looking to breaking down some of the dreams into clear simple steps that actually just let us make progress and if we can be clear on that one year goal uh, sorry that one year point um where we probably have three goals it might be four it might be five it might be two but if we can have somewhere in the region of three goals for someone in re somewhere in the region of 12 months time, then actually we can begin to then say, well, actually, if we're endeavoring to get there in 12 months time, well, then we can begin to think about the next 90 days. Um, the next 90 days, the next quarter. Um, so for us, quarter four, 2020 is uh, fast approaching. We're, we're so enjoying this year. It's been, oh, yeah. It just been, keeps on giving. It's been exciting and so on. Um, we're going to have all the reactive operational changes, whether we like it or not. Um, that's not within our control, um, but we can plan for what we expect. Um, we, we can think about having our plan A, our plan B, our plan C and our plan D. Uh, what happens if, what happens if? There's only so many of those you can do. Um, the purpose of creating plans like this is um, Sir Clive Woodward uh, uh, has a wonderful, uh, a wonderful little uh, teacup expression, uh, which uh, relates to, or it translates as uh, total control under pressure. And it's something which he brought in for the uh, Rugby uh, World Cup. And in all of the team meetings, uh, towards the end, he would put up on the, on the game board a different position. Um, one of those positions was kind of 30 seconds to go, three points behind, or two points behind. These are the positions where we are on the field. What do you do? And then members of the team would all have to come up with the plan. And that meant at the end of the final, uh, what was the score at the end of the final? Um, it wasn't. A lot of difference, was it? I can't remember. I think there was two points in it, uh, with how long to go? Uh, somewhere in the region of 30 seconds. And <coughs> they already knew the plan. The plan was to get the ball back to Johnny Wilkinson for him to do a drop goal. That's how they won the, the World Cup. Um, it's 
what if we're in this situation? You can't do too many what ifs. And uh, if uh, anyone who's had sessions with me where we've been talking about uh, risk and uh, plans and that side of things will have come across my idea of lighthouse thinking, which was born out of uh, a trip to uh, Portland Bill. And the, the Lampen Portland Bill, Bill Lighthouse has been or was there. I think it's now been moved downstairs and replaced with a little LED as of October time. Um, but the lamp was put in in 1906. Um, they've never had to replace a part on it. And the only reason for it being replaced was because it's floated on uh, about you know, 1.75 tonnes of mercury, uh, which apparently uh, isn't particularly good for health and safety these days. Um, so the actual lamp's been moved and replaced. But they have a backup plan because quite literally, if that lighthouse doesn't broadcast its character, um, then ships will crash into the spit and not be aware and it'll cause all sorts of troubles. So the actual light bulb itself, a uh, massive great thing, uh, amazed me that they're 60 pounds each. Um, I want one, I don't know why, but I've got nowhere to plug it in. Uh, but the main bulb, if that fails during the night, there's a second main bulb that will automatically come up. If that bulb fails, then there's a third bulb. This one's only a little one. It can only be seen for something like 20 miles or about as opposed to 28. Um, if that one fails, there's another little bulb that will keep going. If that one fails, then they sound the foghorn while they replace the main bulbs. So they have that plan in place. The electricity, it all runs uh, on phase one electric, so mains electricity comes in. If there's a power cut, then they switch to a generator. If the generator fails, there is a second generator. If the second generator fails, there is a battery, which has, I think it's 24 hours power. So in effect, they've got their plan A, their plan B, their plan C and their plan D. If you can think along the same lines within your planning, you can have the contingency plans for everything reactive that's going on now. Um, but progress and progress now is key. So at this point, I just want to get everyone really thinking whether you're working as an individual, uh, as part of a team, whether you're the business owner, uh, whether this is in your personal life, whether this is in your business life, what are your plans that move you forward this quarter towards your long-term goals? If you're not sure what your long-term goals are, what are you going to do about setting those? And if you, if you want to read a wonderfully uh, disturbing book on the importance of forward-facing goals in terms of our psych psychology and the way we work, then Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Um, very harrowing read. It's not, uh, not easy reading. Um, but actually, it really does demonstrate and, and a whole line of psychology was born out of the book. Um, so, or, or by Viktor Frankl himself. Um, so really it's down to what are the actions that you can take right now that move you forward. If you don't have those forward facing goals, if you don't, haven't created the dreams, that would probably be a great place to start. Um, and, and Remember, it's about just finding those three or four steps that will continuously move you forward and move you closer. Every quarter, if you can have three or four things that move you towards your 12-month goal, if your 12-month goal is moving towards your three goal, yeah, and your three years moving towards your five, and your five's moving towards your longer-term dreams, well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, just, just, just as you were speaking, Pete, I was thinking again, it's, um, it, it's interesting because... The difference between, and again, I'm just quoting other people on this, but the difference between the truly successful and those that aren't is that the truly successful will do the things that the unsuccessful won't, not can't, won't. Or maybe, actually, to be fairer, 
don't. And, and, and that's the, the, the reason for that is, is about focus. And that comes from goals. So if your goals, if your dreams, if your desires, if your goals, if any of those, whichever words you want to use, are not important enough to you to make you do the things that you don't want to do, then get new dreams. And, the, and that's the key bit. It is quite often the reason that we struggle to plan, the reason we struggle to achieve our goals, the reason we struggle to progress is because we don't know what we're progressing towards. And it brings us right back to the beginning of what we were talking about is that those, those goals need to be important enough to you that you would do something that other people wouldn't in order to achieve them. Yeah. But that's, I, I, that's just something that came to mind as you were speaking. So. I, I, and no, I, in fact, we should probably do a session in the future just on the, uh, on the little form of B times D equals half. Yeah, absolutely. We could spend, uh, spend hours on that. <laughs> yeah, be fun. Um, so when it comes through to actually creating, I suppose, a, a, the shorter term 90 day plans, um, think about the, 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 the process, uh, create, create those three or four, probably three, goals that step you forward this quarter and any of you have been to our 90 day planning will be used to that um, but be clear on what they are make them smart smart goals for business in particular are really powerful namely they're specific measurable achievable they are i tend to move to being the right thing to focus on to move you forward as opposed to being results driven or realistic um, that's just my choice uh, and then the T for timed, put a time frame on it. Again, the time frame doesn't have to be exactly three months. It can be two months. It can be three and a half months. That's okay. It's also okay that your goals will change over time. They're not written in stone. And at the moment, that's quite important. So be clear on what they are. Also, have a look at what are the things that stopped you last quarter? What are the challenges that got in the way? Were they elements beyond your control, in which case there are things you have to adapt to, for example, the changes of COVID and the change of the economic environment, uh, or are they just excuses that you're putting out to use? Because actually at every opportunity there, there's the ability to pull, push forward or indeed to hold back. That's a really interesting point. So every, um, so our 90 day planning sessions that we run, Pete, who said, so that the next one's next week. Um, every single, we've missed the last two or we've done the last two online because we've had to because of COVID. But every single one of those, we ask people about their challenges and their wins and the lessons they learn from that. And interestingly enough, whenever we ask challenges, if there's 30 people in the room, 20 of them have roughly the same challenges. And the beauty of that is that there's 20 other business owners in the room who have had the same problem as somebody else and can help in their specific instance because we've already worked through it with them. And it's just the power of joined up and group thinking. It's the mastermind effect that Napoleon Hill talked about in 1937 or whatever it was. But that's, that's the key part to those those events is it's being in a room with other business owners that have um, had the same issues that everybody else is suffering from. And it's, you know, it, it can be cash flow or it can be team. It depends on the quarter that we're in. It depends on the industry, but they're usually very similar challenges. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think it's quite interesting. And, and Andy also alluded there to, to wins um, because actually it's very easy, especially over the last, um, the last, six months to be looking there and saying it's let's say it's all a nightmare uh, it's all been too difficult it's all been too challenging and to look at just the challenges but actually the whole way through this most of us as businesses have had wins um they might not have been the wins we were looking for uh, it might just be the fact that we're still here or we're back up and trading for us a win was getting the office open and expanding the team and continuing or getting back on track with our main plans and looking for those wins is really important as well because you you get lessons from the challenges you also get lessons from your wins and taking the core lessons from every quarter lets you begin to learn more because actually the more you learn the easier life gets so very much a case of pushing it forward 
planning is one of those things that we and I, I will talk generally I'm fairly certain when I say we all recognize that it makes sense and yet in the current climate we, we'll tend to forget it in fact we even recognize that right now it's probably more important than ever to create some plans even if they're only reaching into the beginning of next year and we can't think of 12 months or three years or 10 years time as far as our business is concerned so even if we're only thinking the shorter term we, we don't make the decisions on today we want to make them based around where we want to get to tomorrow and i think i, th I think i always find it frustrating with children uh, i don't know if anyone's got this i've got a load of homework to do i'm not going to do it today because today i can go and play all day and then tomorrow i'm going to be in a complete stress because i'm playing catch up it's it, do it <laughs> do it first do the work and I, I have, if anybody wants them, I have the 12 rules to success on my wall. Some of them are quite amusing. But one of, the, one of them is do the work, don't be lazy. And it, it, it's what are the actions you're taking? And in fact, are the actions you're taking today? And there's a great set of NLP questions um, that are suggested that people ask themselves every day. The, the first one is what am I looking forward to today? What am I looking forward to longer term? And then it says, are my actions aligned with what I'm looking forward to. So are the actions that you're taking today aligned with your longer term goals? And if they're not, why not? What's getting in the way? And this comes back to challenges, wins. And, and this is why planning is so important. And I, I think Pete's point is absolutely true. I think most people recognize that planning is incredibly important, especially in business. I mean, having said that, most people, um, and again, I'm generalizing, but most people put more effort into planning their holiday than they do the next year in their business. And, 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 and that kind of gives you the, the, uh, uh, an indication of why so many businesses don't actually make it, why so many businesses fail in their first five years. Why? Because they spend more time planning their holidays than they do their business. And, and that's why we're so keen. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we enjoy the actual planning. We enjoy what we get out of having a plan. So we do the work that needs to be done. That's, and the good news is that planning holidays is going to be much more simple for the next 12 months. You're not having any. Which means that, you, <laughs> which means that the opportunity and the time could be spent on, on planning your holiday can be spent on planning the business. Yeah. Um, I suppose the important part is don't get to the end of a quarter or the end of a year and look back and where, wonder where the progress went. And that's the crux of planning. Once you've got a 90-day plan, though, it's very much a case of pulling it back um plan your week uh we we use a focus sheet which uh we're just introducing to the team they're really excited about that and getting the cheers and hey, looking forward to that um but planning the week actually just lets you know what are the what are the things i need to achieve this week that will move me towards that quarterly progress because on a busy week it's very easy to lose track of that. Recognizing that that's important stuff, even though it's not urgent, and therefore diarising it to make sure it happens. Well, that's where uh, I'm fully aware that several of you listening actually recognise that's where you get your progress. And that's where it comes from. So plan your weekly goals and then plan your day. As Bruce, Bruce Lee puts it again, so another Bruce Lee quote, make at least one definite move daily towards your goal. So if you've got your week's goal, then actually your daily goal, what is it I'm going to do today that moves me towards that week goal? If that week goal leads towards the quarterly goal, then it's, it's the knock-on effect of progress. Uh, it, uh, and it's a back end then. That, that progress in how do you plan the day andy um well yeah, there's many different ways that people can do it and i think what's important is you find something that works for you um what works for me might not work for you it might not work for pete 
essentially what I do is exactly what Peace just said. So we have our quarterly plan. We know as a business what it is that we need to achieve. We have a set of actions that need to be done and we have uh, pretty much timelines of when those need to be done by in order to achieve our longer term goals. Um, so that brings me back to the week. And on a Friday, what I will do is I'll sit down and I put some time aside. It's in my diary as a default setting. Um, it's a default appointment with myself where I will plan next week. So I will look at all the things I need to do. And I just write a list of all the things that need to be done next week. And then what I will do is prioritize those tasks in, um, in, in order of, well, what's most important, what actually needs to be done. And there's, sometimes it, there's things on that list that absolutely need to be done that aren't really part of our plan. They're just firefighting, but they still need to be done. Um, then what I do is I look at, well, when, when, or when can I organize these throughout the week? This doesn't take very long. I mean, it's about a half an hour job. It's not a very long job. Uh, and then what I will do is I actually put those into my, my diary, into my Outlook diary or my um, Gmail diary, depending on which one I'm using for these particular tasks, so that I get a reminder every day. The beauty of that is, is I can come in on a Monday morning, look at my diary, and I know exactly what I've got to do. I haven't even got to worry about thinking. I just look at my list. I have a backup written list because I just like to check things off as I've done them. So either scribble them out or just put a check mark next to them. It just gives me a bit of satisfaction that I've done something. That me does. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but it's finding something that, that works for you when it comes to um, planning your day. But I just, I, I, the, the statement that always rings around in my head is don't finish today until you plan tomorrow. Yeah, which, which is uh, important. And, it, and it's, it also applies to the week. It's quite interesting how much more effective we are if we actually plan our following week at the end of the week before. And it's, it all comes into the, just the way our brains work and the goal focus and the, the wonderful thing called the reticular activating system. All of these things move forward. So in relation to this session, um, that's pretty much where we, where we took it to. Uh, if you've got any questions, please type them in or uh, we can happily unmute people if you want to come and say hello. And... If you're wondering how to put this into process, well, firstly, plan some time. If you want to join us, we have um, some longer term planning sessions coming up. So just pick, ping one of us an email or uh, just look it up on our website uh, or uh, give us a call, whatever. It, it's um, probably worth saying as well for anybody who's not joining us next week, we have a 90 day planning session next week. And all of this stuff we cover off in a, in, in a lot more detail. It's a whole day session. Um, it's very reasonably priced. Um, if anybody's interested, we do have a couple of slots left. Um, pretty, pretty much, we, we're almost full up, but we do have a couple of slots left. If, if you'd like to come along, please just get in touch. If you think this would be helpful for anyone else, please put them in touch with us. You can send us their name. We'll, we'll get in touch with them. We are, we're, we're not passionate about um, doing the actual planning, but we are passionate about people planning their own future and their business because it's how how we achieve in every single instance of um, people achieving their dreams, there's been a plan behind it. So yeah, I'm, it's really important. As Pete says, we've got some more, more sessions coming up where we're doing the um, more operational plans and we also do the strategic planning with people as well. Um, it's, it's one of the biggest parts of what we do with businesses is getting them focused on what they need to do and then helping them implement that plan. So uh, actually I suppose a strategic plan is kind of what your business needs to look like, what you, the strategy behind getting to where you, you want to be. The operational plan is about, well, what needs to happen in the next um, 12 to 18 months? And the, the, the 90 day plan is, okay, so what, what are we focusing on this quarter? And it's, it, once you've got all of those things, then it's about implementing that plan as well. So it, it's, that's where the, the support comes from. That's, I mean, that's where most of our time goes is into helping people plan and then delivering those plans. So, yeah. yeah. And therefore, actually, the 90 day planning, which will obviously be back in December as it runs every 90 days, uh, it's yeah, all, all appropriately physically distanced and uh, actually operates at Cumberwell Golf Course. And then beyond that, we've got the 18 month planning days where we get you really thinking about some of the longer objectives, looking out as far as the five year point, and then pulling that back to create a, I suppose a tangible 12 month plan. We tend to run it as an 18 month plan, so it overflows, and then invite you back to renew that every 12 months. So those are the processes we run through. If there's 
anything else we can do to add value to you today, then please say. If you have any comments or feedback, then please stick, in, stick them in the chat box. But be quick because very shortly I'm going to sign off and say, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we truly hope that this session's add, added value into you and your businesses and given you some areas for thought. And beyond that, we're going to say goodbye. Get on with your week, plan your day, look at where your planning is going to come in, and we'll talk to you shortly. Take care now. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Janet. Take care now. How's the Maldives? Hmm. It's the same shite. <laughs> Enjoying COVID then. <laughs> no, it's driving me schizo. Okay. Let me, let me, let, yeah. I will, I will. Uh, excellent. So, uh, <laughs> uh, is the weather better? Um, yeah, we've, we've had, a, it's not too bad at the moment. Um, we've had a few storms, but it's... Um, cleared up but it i think we're getting a few more coming through so it's that time of year excellent excellent uh, are the resorts open yet or not uh yeah we've, there's quite a lot of them open but they're like 10 percent occupancy so <laughs> and there's a load a load of the bigger a load of the bigger ones of of delayed opening because of course the whole of europe has got a don't travel ban on so None of the operators are, are moving anybody because they can't for all the uh, legalities that come into it. So uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, you're well. Yeah, yeah, just going slightly mad. Uh, well, Janet, you were slightly mad years ago, let alone now. I did say mad. Uh. <laughs> all right, sorry. Just checking. Just checking. Uh, 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 and was that was that a good session for you? Yeah, it came out good because I mean I'm getting bamboos at the moment, and just I had a conversation literally yesterday with somebody saying it's really depressing and demoralising when it's so difficult to plan anything because things change at the drop of a hat, and you have no idea what's going to happen. You don't, um, and it's very easy therefore not to plan at all, and yet actually not planning just means that you're not going anywhere and you become totally reactive. Um, a lot of the plans that people and businesses will have will actually be the same once this, uh, this uh, wonderful thing that is COVID disappears uh, or at least reduces in importance in the world. Um, which I, I, if, you, if you look at the stats, I still find a lot of the stats quite confusing. Um, but yeah, uh, if, if you, like, like, once it pulls forward, a lot of the plans people have, a lot of their life plans, a lot of their business plans will actually remain unchanged. So what people tend to discover is actually they've stopped planning, they've stopped putting things, stopped moving things forward, which means that they'll come back 6, 12, 18 months later to discover they've made no progress in that time. And then they have torn sense of purpose lost that time and they don't get it back. So very much a case of actually look at what you can plan now. What can you be working on? What can you be developing? A uh, great time for new learnings as a person. Um, so in terms of individual learnings, it's a great time because generally a lot of people have a bit more time than they used to. Um, and yet lots of people just had a three month holiday, um, which was uh, nice. But then they're coming back to work, no, not in a position to move forward from it. And then they become reactive. Uh, so think about the objectives. Think about where you want to be in 12 months' time and what that looks like and what you need to do to get there. Um, simple as that, really. Yeah, no, it is. It's just frustrating. It is. I'd love to be able to plan to go somewhere, but yeah, it's just like a waste of energy. Get a rowing boat. <laughs> so we'll stick to just planning on what we're doing for the week. It's much easier.
Oh, it's don't necessarily run with the easy, Janet. <laughs> the further forward you can think and push, the more likely you are to make progress. Yeah, no, true. Which is why it, actually it's been a it's been a good session because it just gets you back towards a better mindset. So it's good. Get thinking. Get your head in the right place. And this, like thinking about this week, yeah, things can change, but keep thinking about what happens the week beyond. Um, and I mean, you can't even plan Christmas right now. Um, we don't know what's going to be going on. Um, will you be allowed to even meet your family? Who knows? Um, but there are lots of things you can plan. I think lots of things that won't be affected. Yeah, no, that's true enough. And beyond so. that, uh, it's a great opportunity to go snorkeling. No, it is. Actually, although I have actually managed to find somebody who might be able to take me diving when um, they relax a few more regulations. Uh, so, uh, well, yeah, I, 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 I'm dreaming about diving now. There's a, there's, <laughs> a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a plan coming together, not Bob's to key. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> right. It's a bit warmer. Okay. Excellent. Take care now. Keep planning. And you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Pete, Andy, are we? Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> hi, Jim. Oh, hi, we're, sir. I'm sitting here. We're just closing down now. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. You well? Yeah, no, I, uh, perfect. No, the, I was only wondering whether you guys also know the Daniel Burris, The Future Trends book. Because uh, no, because, uh, no. Only a sorry, minor closing thing about this idea of short term and gets shorter and shorter. Daniel Burris talks about future trends, hard trends and soft trends. And just think about Sorry, Andy. It's still live on Facebook. I'm okay. sorry, on YouTube. Right. Jim, we're going to love you and leave you. Okay, all right. Okay, sorry. See you later, Jim. Okay, take care now. Well done Bye. today. Bye-bye. Thank you.